Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. My name is Matt. My co-host, as always, is Mysterious Mike Talent. So instead of Bill and Ted, you are now dealing with Matt and Mike. And I'm pretty sure we have been friends at least as long as Bill and Ted. Well, probably not the fictional Bill and Ted, the real Bill and Ted. Because, I mean, Mike, when did, when did uh, the original film come out? It was like late 80s? Uh, uh, 1989, Matt. 89? I was going to say 89. I was thinking either 89 or like 90, somewhere in there. So, okay, maybe Bill and Ted does have a speed because I don't, I don't know the exact year when we became friends. I'm, I'm not sure either. I remember the age. The age was around 10 because that's when you moved to town. So that'd be like uh, 92... I think that's right. Yeah. So, okay, fine. Bill and Ted has this beat, damn it. Oh, well. So, all right, folks, let me do a little bit of a breakdown here because we're going to do things a little different on this pod because we have a lot and this is going to be a long one, most likely. Um, So here's your warning. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to talk about our brand new giveaway. And then Mike is going to talk about a little bit of news. Then we're going to talk about our film that we watched this week that we paid money for. We did not go to the theaters. We did the video on demand, the very first one for the real film nerds, the home theater that we paid for. Uh, and that is Bill and Ted face the music. And then we're going to talk about a little bit more news, Netflixy stuff, right, Mike? Yep. That's correct, man. And we're going to talk a little bit about the box office because, uh, it's interesting to see the numbers. People did go to the theaters this weekend. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then we're going to end the podcast, and then you will hear my radio interview with Lisa live from here in Prescott, Arizona. So, all right, first things first, here's our giveaway. I need to read a little bit of copy. This is a brand new film that just came out last week. We were supposed to run this last week, and I am a slacker because uh, I drink too much, or I don't drink enough. It's one of the two. But here we go. Brand new film called the vanished it is an independent film it stars Anne haish and thomas jane and here's a little bit of a synopsis i've watched the trailer i've not watched the film i'm actually kind of excited to watch the film mike you watched the trailer right uh yes i did matt and this looks like a great intense revenge thriller uh i i'm with you i i want to watch it dude it it looks like your kind of film for me it's a it's a really dark and twisted story clearly, but I think it looks like it would be a good one to watch. It's not for the faint of heart. I'll put it that way, but for movie buffs, especially probably horror slash thriller, because I could see elements of horror in here. This would be a good one. So here we go. New today, but it's not new today on digital. Anne Heche and Thomas Jane star in the gripping psychological thriller, the van vanished. Directed by Peter Fascinelli, a family vacation takes a terrifying turn when two parents discover that their young daughter has vanished without a trace. Stopping at nothing to find her, the search for the truth leads to a shocking revelation where nothing is what it seems in this intense thriller. You can own or rent The Vanished on digital today and watch it at home tonight. It is rated R, and it comes to us courtesy of Paramount Pictures. And Paramount, thank you very much for providing us with some digital codes to give your film away. And so uh, we talked about it last week. For those of you who would like a digital code, a digital copy, we do have several. What you need to do is you need to email either me, Mike, or our community email, which is nerds. So you can email Mike at realfilmnerds.com or matt at realfilmnerds.com, or just simply nerds at realfilmnerds.com, and tell us your favorite beer. Because for those of you who do not listen to our podcast all the time, we love beer almost as much as we love movies. Maybe more. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a toss-up. It is a pretty good toss-up. Mike loves IPAs more than he loves his own son, though, so that's, that's a dark one. Honey, if you're listening, I did not say that. That is lies. They are not lies. It's truth. Hashtag truth. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, now it's truth because he put a hashtag in front. Damn right it is, Mike. So anyways, all right. If you want to watch an, a brand new movie, a thrilling movie, a fun movie, hit us up. Tell us your favorite beer. Nerds at realfilmnerds.com. All right. Back on with the show. Let's roll into it. Mike, we had some tragic news that happened a few days ago. Let's talk about it. Uh, yeah. So uh, Chadwick uh, Bozeman. Um, who played uh, Black Panther, uh, King T'Challa, passed away at 43 after a uh, four-year battle with uh, colon cancer. And um, this is, you know, kind of, I mean, it's it's really sad to lose somebody, uh, you know, fairly young, uh, especially as we're getting in our late 30s. Uh, 43 doesn't seem so far away now. And this also happened to be my very first episode on The Real Film Nerds. This is episode number four. It was back in March 7th, 2018. Um, back then, I was known as Hoppy Mike, but I have become more mysterious. And, uh, and talented. So, uh, it, <laughs> yes, and talented. <laughs> and uh, in honor of that, uh, of, of his passing, uh, ABC aired uh, Black Panther this weekend uh, on Sunday. Commercial uh, free commercial free and six million people watched it nice. so uh that that was really really uh neat and uh what a way to honor him this was very unexpected at least uh nobody as far as i've read in the media really knew this was coming so uh it's it's kind of crappy because uh he was a great uh black panther uh, great actor he he starred in a bunch of movies including playing jackie robinson um 42 and yeah that was that was great a great film. movie he, yeah he's he's been in lots of movies he was just you know he's just breaking out like basically he was just becoming a star so it's kind of sad to see someone go down right when they're starting to be well and i have to i don't know if i want to say i admire him but i have to applaud him for not making it a big deal that he was sick and trying to garner attention. I think it would have been nice to know that he was sick before his passing, but I I kind of applaud him for not trying to use his sickness to gain more limelight, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, and I even, I think today read, read something about that he was making uh, hospital visits uh, for kids with cancer and stuff while he was actually had cancer. And I thought that was great. You know, he's still doing public appearances and stuff like he, he you know, he didn't want to, like you said, he didn't want to like have the emphasis on him. He just wanted to try and deal with it and lost his battle. Yeah. Great actor gone way too soon you will be greatly missed chadwick thank you for doing a great job though and inspiring us to tie every single one of the movies we watch to the marvel cinematic universe yeah it, it was the, it was the next review after that that i tied it to the mcu and and forever that's our uh, that's our little that's our little shtick <laughs> and that was uh game night right yeah i think game night was our very first one where we started doing the mcu tie-ins but it was inspired by the Black Panther. I never remember how many reels I gave it. It was either four or four and a half, I think. I don't think I gave it a perfect score, but it was high. No, I think you gave it four. Yeah, yeah, it was either four or four and a half, something in there. So you, we can we can we can look it up on the website realfilmnerds.com. Nice, Matt. That, that was a good that was a good segue. <laughs> Lots of just plugging. Sliding today. it right in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just sliding it right in. I just I just slammed it right in. Is that what she said, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes your, your favorite i know i gotta stop that it's still funny though to me i'm sorry it's still funny so all right well everyone here we go let's do it mike a film franchise that was two films deep that i think ended on a really good note decided to make a trilogy what 20 years later uh yeah 91 was the last uh bill and ted so uh how many years is that? Um, 30, 31 years? Yes. Oh, damn it. I am getting old. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and they turned it, it oh, They turned it into a trilogy. Yes. Yes, they did. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to slam it, you know, 
not off the bat. I mean, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun movie. So, all right, Mike, before I start giving my opinions and we start doing discussions, go ahead, Mike, give us the rundown for Bill and Ted Face the Music. All right. Um, so, uh, Bill and Ted Face the Music, uh, directed by Dean Periscott. Uh, writ- writers uh, Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon. Uh, it's starring Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, Samara Weaving, Bridget Lundy Payne. And it's, uh, you know, two dudes uh, from Sam Demas performing uh, like normal. Uh, once, once told they've saved the universe during a time-traveling adventure, two would-be rockers from Sam Demas, California, find themselves as middle-aged dads still trying to crank out a hit song and fulfill their destiny. Mike, have you ever heard of San Dimas before this movie? No, I had not. I had. My uncle, my dad's twin brother, was living in San Dimas when I was uh, younger and around this. And I remember when this movie came out, I was like, oh, that's where my uncle lives. He owned a car dealership out there back then. Now now I don't know what he does. He's in Texas now. But yeah, I just always thought that was so random that they picked San Dimas, California of all places. Yeah, that's pretty random. So, Mike, uh, I'm going to let you go first, because I've gone first the past couple of weeks, I believe. Uh, Mike, what are your first initial impressions of this film? Um, so, it's it's good to see this going again. I wasn't sure if it needed to come out, um, but it's kind of fun to just see the characters come back to life. Uh, Bill and Ted uh, are just ridiculous, fun characters. And then, now they have daughters, so it was interesting to see how their daughter you know, father dynamic was, and, um, I thought it was pretty great. Uh, I like seeing all the, uh, characters come back. I mean, you pretty much had most of the original characters from all the movies, uh, come back. That's a real feat. I don't even know how they pulled that off. Um, I mean, even Chief Logan, I mean, Ted's dad came back for this. I mean, it's crazy. Well, and even George Carlin made an appearance, even though he is, past he still had a little bit of a cameo in there he did and and i thought that was cool that was nice um i liked it yeah um i wasn't sure if they were going to be able to work in the phone booth because i mean matt what is a phone booth right isn't isn't that your cell well and then you see like the 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 um dichotomy you have bill and ted rolling around in the phone booth they're familiar with then their daughters roll around in an egg, but they have their smartphones in their pockets. So what's the first thing they do when they start traveling through time? Spoilers. <laughs> they start using their smartphone to take pictures and video of all these historical events. It's pretty awesome. This movie was was okay. Um, Just okay. But I, well, well there, there are certain things, Matt, I, I think is cool about this movie. Is I'm, I'm hoping this movie will bring... Uh, a bunch of people into it that hadn't known about Bill and Ted's and revive some of the old, you know, the excellent adventure and, and uh, bogus journey because that would be neat as well, you know, like kind of revive some of that old stuff and see some of that old, older movies and the, the franchise. Did you look when you were renting this? That if you look at like the most downloaded or most rented right now, at towards the top is the excellent adventure and the bogus journey. They're in like the top twenty because people are <laughs> watching them before they watch this one. Yeah, that's awesome. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, this was it was fun to see the characters again. Uh, I I think I think there's some story things that are a little bit strange, but. We can talk about that a little bit more in, in the uh, spoilers, but overall, you know, it, it was good to see the characters again, and I guess, you know, some of that nostalgia. Um, Matt, being a fan of Halloween Horror Nights, uh, you know, for the last several years, uh, it wasn't up until just recently, they had a Bill and Ted, like, um, variety show, and and a lot of people like... Why do they have a Bill and Ted? And it was it was still funny. They, they they were able to just basically have all this random stuff happen, and with the time travel stuff, they could you could just do it. It just 
kind of made sense. So it's kind of funny um, that they had that for all those years, but they, they recently retired it, which quite a few people were very sad about. Well, yeah, because it, I, if I'm not mistaken, Mike, you're, you're more of a Halloween Horror Nights nut than I am, but they started that with the very first Halloween Horror Nights, and they did it every year for all of them. They they did do it for every year. Um, I think they retired it in 2018, I think. It's kind of funny now that the movie came out in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> that they just got rid that of it. That would really gain traction, you know? I, I wonder if they'll like bring it back, but it'll be like their daughters. I don't know. Uh, they, you know, they, they could bring it back. Um, uh, this year, of course, uh, Halloween Horror Nights is canceled because of a virus thing that people have probably heard about so the vid anyway yeah the covid the covid canceled the horror nights i still prefer calling it the rona but people are calling it the vid now oh okay yeah well because it's too close to corona and the i'm sure there's like a license infringement they're like no you can't say that well mike speaking of beers Ooh, good segue, uh-huh. man. That was uh-huh. that was that was good. We uh-huh. it's like we planned that. I think you planned it. You gonna ask your question or do I have to Yes, yes, I am gonna ask your question. So Matt, uh, what are you drinking? <sighs> well, Mike, thank you for asking. So I finally got my second beer delivery that was supposed to be here last month. But I got it this month. I am drinking this new beer from... Well, I don't know if it's a new beer, but it's new to me. From the Brothers Craft Brewing. Brothers Craft Brewing. In Harrisonburg, Virginia. And it's called Pilsnerd. Ooh, Pilsnerd. I just like the name. I know. That's why I grabbed it. That's the the first one out of it. Look, the label looks like a video game. You probably can't see it. But say it looks like a video game. Oh, cool! And it uh, here. Let me let me get the little brochure out, and I'll just read the little brochure of that comes with the beers when you subscribe to it. Uh, this German style Pilsner presents a pale straw color, topped with a voluminous head of white foam. A tall Pilsner glass is definitely the right call here to provide room for that foam and to allow a pleasant view of all the tiny bubbles wandering up to the surface. It's a four point cent out four point six percent alcohol. It is a German Pilsner. Mike, what IPA are you drinking? Well, Matt, you were right. I am drinking another IPA. Uh, you know, I, I've I've had a few of these, and um, it's it's pretty good, man. It's a Lagunitas, a little something something. It's a way smooth and silky IPA. On on the side of the can, it says "Say Wheatley esque ishness." <laughs> Is that English? Yeah, yeah. Wheatley esque ishness. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. No. Anyway, this is a good one. Uh, Lagunitas is a solid brewery that has quite a bit of IPAs there, you know, California based, but they have a, a brewery also in the Chicago area, which I've been to, the Chicago area one, and it was ginormous and awesome. Who was I talking to the other day? I don't remember. I was talking to one of my friends about uh, going and buying beer and how half of the shelves are IPA, like just IPAs. Uh, It really feels like a slight against those of us who do not like IPAs because well i'm i'm sorry man i'm i'm 50 percent one style of beer and then you got to have stouts and pilsners and reds and ambers and all the others take up the other 50 percent you're right you're right ipas dominate the market i'm sorry but you know at the same time i'm a little upset about these little seltzers everywhere dude that shit's because they're taking up a lot of shelf space now and uh I'm I'm not I'm not digging it, but obviously they're selling. So, what am I going to do? You know, if they're if they're selling like six of those compared to one pack of IPA, well, which one do you, are they going to get? Well, and look how many of them they're selling. I mean, everybody's making them. There's a Bud Light seltzer. There's a Corona seltzer. White Claw's the original. Oh yeah, White Claw, like 
captured that market and all those uh like budweiser's and all the big guys are like whoa hold up everybody else we'll, is like yeah we need to get we'll, on this we'll game. Be there yep we need to get our seltzer on don't get me wrong they're not bad have you had one yeah they're just i mean it's just light like I, I, I think I understand why they're doing well. They're 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 light, they're easy drinking, uh they're low calories. Like I mean it's they, they check a lot of boxes for people. Especially the ladies. And those of us like me that are trying to watch their figure. Yep. Yep. I'm not telling you how I'm trying to watch my figure, but anyways, all right, all right, Mike, let's do it. Let's move on to the Chadwick Bozeman inspired Marvel Cinematic Universe tie in. So let me let me say it appropriately. Here we go. So, Mike, how does Bill and Ted face the music relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Well, Matt, thanks for asking, especially on this uh very sad day for the mcu um the cinematographer shelly johnson uh was worked on or uh, was the cinematographer for captain america the first avenger and also on this movie so perfect um, yeah it wasn't too hard to find this one and i like that man man sometimes digging i i still feel like jaws is my favorite tie-in because it, it was so so hard to find that's one. the achievement <laughs> yeah the the piece de la resistance right that's the that's the <laughs> yes yes the best all right so those of you who are joining us for the first time or first time today from here on out traditionally we are going to spoil the movie i already spoiled it a little bit I don't think it was that bad of a spoiler. I mean, come on, it's Bill and Ted's. You know everybody's going to be traveling through time. So here we go. Here are is our spoiler discussion for Bill and Ted's Face the Music. Mike, let's go. The story was not great. One of the parts of the story that I did enjoy was the time travel and the fact that like everybody is time traveling now. Bill and Ted is, their daughters were, and their wives were. They were going all over the place. And now t- it's not just time travel. It's like through different reality like realities or different universes i don't know it started getting real complicated but i like that everybody's time traveling now that was fun it was it, it was fun i i liked seeing the daughters uh go on their kind of journey um i for bill and ted i i didn't understand why they kept going to the future i felt like they should have just i don't know that but they just kept going farther and farther in the future but I like how the daughters were going back in the past, and I kind of like their story arc a little bit better than than Bill and Ted's. And I also felt like Bill and Ted's were uh, the characters. I mean, they were still mostly Bill and Ted, but they they seemed a little bit more subdued. You know, like I mean, I guess maybe because they're older. There was a part where they were talking about sixty nine, and they didn't even highlight it, and it was very sad to me. Yeah, you would have thought they would have gone a little bit more over the top with the Bill and Ted, but again, I mean, it's kind of, I, I, I imagine it's probably very hard for Keanu Reeves to do that anymore, since, you know, he's Neo, and he's, you know, John Wick. I mean. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I love that Keanu Reeves would even want to, you know, would even consider doing it. I he he's such He seems like such a cool dude. Um, yeah, I think he's just so normal. It's kind of weird. I would love to have a beer with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Definitely. He would be a lot of fun. And you know he's like huge into motorcycles and cars and all that stuff. Guns. Like because of John Wick, he got into competitive shooting. Yeah, no. He's he's a very skilled shooter and learned all kinds of stuff about guns. Yeah. He's a he's I think he would be a fun dude to get a beer with and hang out with for sure. I don't know. It was more like the daughter's story was probably m- more akin to the original Bill and Ted because they're going back in time and they're getting all these great musicians and they're putting them together. Granted, the original was not musicians. It was historical figures. But it was almost like a parallel with them going backwards and then Bill and Ted is go- are going into the future and they're talking to themselves. And I have to say, that was fun 
was seeing all the different Bill and Ted's and how horrible they got and how they kept getting just more horrible. I mean, the prison ones were hilarious. I mean, they were just freaks. <laughs> oh yeah, the the yes, it, it it was fun to see them like see you know meet up with themselves, you know, like the other Bill and Ted's, but th- how drastically different they were, like physically or or just like <laughs> like. The facial hair, the dis- just different features. It, w- it was fun. Like, yeah, the the prison with the tats were really funny because it was like excellent and like <laughs> like they had like really just dumb things on, like just tatted all over them, and they were just like incredibly ripped. I don't know. It was fun. Like that was probably really fun for them. Oh, I bet. I bet playing different Bill and Ted's throughout you know the future, and then you know the first ones were the disgruntled ones. That was pretty funny. Yeah, um, as far as uh, the daughters, Matt, uh, Bridget Lindy Payne, who played Billy, I thought she nailed Keanu's, like, character, like, as, as like, a, like, being the daughter. Like, she had all the mannerisms that he did. Like, I don't know. I, I thought she really went to town on trying to kind of mimic that she was, you know, uh, a Ted's daughter, you know? Yeah. 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 And she, I think she did a better job than Samara Weaving. I just had a hard time like wrapping my head around Samara Weaving because of seeing Ready or Not and then um, Guns Akimbo. I'm just like, what? You know, and they purposely like put her in like overalls and like really baggy clothes to try and make her look younger. And sh- they succeeded. She looked really, really young. She did not look like she was 24. Like what she was supposed to be in the movie, um, I don't know. I she did okay as te- as uh, Bill's daughter, you know. Yeah, I I thought she did okay as uh, was it Tia? Yeah, like yeah, the basically li- li- little little uh, Bill, little 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 Ted. Bill, little Ted. Yeah, and they they addressed it though because that's what they did at the end of Bogus Journey. Everybody meet little Bill, you know, everybody meet little Ted. And then they changed it to girls, which I thought was great. Yeah, no, I, I, th- I thought it was great as well. I, yeah, that's, that's good. Um, yeah, that, that, that was fun. I mean, everybody coming back, like death was in this. Oh, dude, William Sadler's death is amazing. He's always amazing as death. It was so much fun. Uh, yeah, he, he he's fun to see in it. I felt like his his, I felt like some of the story stuff could have been a little bit funnier. I felt like some of it didn't quite hit. Like death in this one, he had some good lines and he did some stuff, but I felt like he wasn't as funny. Well, he was disgruntled. He was Me, burned. He had a restraining order yeah. put out against him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I loved his like his like postmodern like house in hell. Like there's all this. Oh no, his house was cool. Yeah, there's like all this fire and brimstone and murder and demons going on outside, and he has this just like postmodern, like just really high class looking like house with like tributes to like the Wild Stallions and John Lennon's like piano and like <laughs> it's just Death is one of my favorite characters, man. You you know another one was that was really I really liked a lot and I had to look up who the actor was that played him, but uh, he's a new character and I thought he was hilarious. Was uh, uh, Dennis Caleb McCoy, <laughs> oh, the robot dude, the-, <laughs> the the robot assassin laser guy, and he's like, yeah, hi, I'm Dennis, I'm Dennis McCoy, Dennis Caleb McCoy. He was played by one of my favorite up and coming actors. Uh, Anthony Kerrigan. For those of you who have seen the HBO show Barry, <laughs> he's the uh, the the right. I don't want to say right hand man, but he's he's one of the assassin guys that uh, employs Barry, and he he just he's so much fun. He is his humor is like subdued and like dry and just he nailed it with uh with the uh the laser shooting robot. <laughs> yeah i mean it it kind of builds it's one of those building jokes yeah. like yeah my name is uh oh what of course i'm um dennis caleb uh what, what was his mccoy full name oh mccoy yeah uh was it was a fun character because it just kept building on 
Dennis McCoy, Dennis Caleb McCoy. It just he he just kept saying it, and it's just like he's like, all right, and like Bill and Ted are like, dude, we got it, Dennis Caleb McCoy. Let's go over here. Like it, it was kind of funny, but at first he he's when he's introduced into the movie, you're like, oh no, that guy kind of looks scary and stuff, and then it just kind of gets to he's not scary. He's not. He's just he's just a robot who somehow goes into hell, which they <laughs> they kind of had like a, a couple jokes about and then just stopped. I felt like they should have rode that out a little further, but they didn't. Well, I mean, there was all kinds of random shit that was in hell. I mean, the, the, the Dennis Caleb McCoy joke, I mean, going to hell, that was funny. They walked past some demons. You know, Bill and Ted are like asking the demons, where where did everybody go? Have you seen these girls? Where'd they go? He has a smartphone. It's working fine, <laughs> you know, to show the picture of his daughters. And then a robot walks by and he's like, hey, uh, where'd those, where'd those guys go? And they're like, is that a robot? What's a robot doing in hell? <laughs> they just, and then later on, there's a SWAT truck in hell because the robot lasered a SWAT truck. It's just yeah, no, it's, it's goofy. It, I mean, it's it's, it's it random. Fun. Oh, I liked it, man. I, I I wanted to ask you this question. Uh, I ended up watching this with uh, Mags, and uh, we were watching it, and there's some cool cameo cameos in this, and you know, I, I'll. I won't spoil uh, all of them, but one of them was uh, this guy, Kid Cuddy. Matt, did you know who that was? No. Because Maggie did not. I have no clue who Kid Cuddy is. I uh, I have listened to lots of his songs, but I, I know him from Pandora. Back in when Pandora was pretty popular, he came up a lot when I had on certain like radio stations. And so I know him from that. But Maggie's like, I have no idea who that guy is. Is that is he playing himself? I'm like, yep. I figured he was playing himself, but I, I I wasn't sure. I knew he was a musician of some kind, but I wasn't sure if he was like electronic or rap or R and B or what. So, or maybe even a DJ. Yeah, he he's uh he's like kind of rappy rock. I don't know, man. He kind of, and he talks about weird things like future and parallel universes. And I think that's why he's in this movie, but it worked. So, uh, I just, I just wanted to know if you knew who that was. No, uh, no idea. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. On that note, um, let's see what, what haven't I covered, Matt? Oh, so Matt, Matt, do you want me to talk about my more news thing, or do you want me? Or do to, you want to do reels? Should we go into the reels? Either way, man. What do you feel most comfortable doing, Mike? It's your show too. All right, uh, let's do the reels, man. Okay. So, um, you know, let's hear what you have to say first on the reels, because I usually go first. Let's hear what you have to say. But all right, Mike. Um. I, I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was fun. Again, it was probably just the mood I was in. I was not in the world's best mood when I watched this film. And this made me laugh and it made me suge- nostalgic. Made me feel better about myself and life in general. So uh, I give it four out of five reels. I, I just enjoyed it. I really did. It's not as good as the originals. Um, if I had to pick my favorite out of all three of them, I think Excellent Journey, the original, is probably my favorite I really, I really, really enjoyed Bogus Journey, especially a lot of the call-outs to sci-fi stuff and nerd stuff and robots and building and really liked that stuff and going to hell and Arlie Ermy being in it. But I still have to give it to the original because it started this whole thing. But yeah, four out of five reels. Mike, five out of five? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no, man. Damn it, Mike. Um, I'm going to give it three out of five reels. Three? Oh, I liked it. Wow. I, I, I liked it, but the the story to me was a little bit... I felt like some of the writing just wasn't as creative. The um, I just feel like they would... I don't know. I just... I, I can't put a, a, you know, a, a precise point on it, but I felt like it just wasn't quite what I would expect from uh bill and ted but you know this was written by the original writer of the first two so um um you know i'm not sure if there's anything more that could be done chris matheson uh worked on all three bill and ted's so 
this yeah i mean basically they got everyone back for this which is really impressive yeah uh, honestly um and that's really cool because it, it helps make it you know more along the lines but i just felt like bill and ted might be a little bit different than they were but maybe that's just me trying to force something and not think about you know they have 24 year old daughters and blah 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 so Three out of five, yeah. Three out of five, yeah. Okay, Mike, on to the news. Are you going to do your the rest of the news? Mike News Part 2. Are you going to do your uh, Netflix or the movie box office? Which one you you want to kick off here, dude? Uh, let's, let's do the box office because that'll be pretty easy. So, exciting stuff, people. People are going to the movies again. And Matt and I will be seeing movies shortly, but we've had a busy last week or two but we're gonna go soon we definitely are gonna see tenant in the theater absolutely uh at a bare minimum um so the new mutants movie came out and uh it it it's number one and it pulled in seven million dollars which i know is low but at least people are going to the movies what's interesting too is that movie is getting absolutely obliterated by the critics People hate that movie. No. Well, we haven't seen it. I'm not sure that we would hate it. I probably wouldn't. Um, But I I, I like the new mutants. I'm not sure I like what they've done with them, but I still would probably enjoy it. You would probably enjoy it because it's a horror movie. Oh, yeah. I probably would enjoy it because it is a horror movie. Um, Unhinged, which is like a revenge movie or like a crazy like thriller type movie. That was number two. How did you not uh, watch that? I, I, dude, I just I haven't had time to go to the theater, man. <laughs> we all know. Young... We all know how much you love your revenge, Mike. Again, I, know, I don't I know. want to know who you want to seek revenge against because they're going to get it bad one of these days when you finally crack. <laughs> yeah. So that movie uh, made uh, two point six million dollars, and then uh, Bill and Ted Face the Music in the theater made a million dollars and then but it was also simultaneously released on video on demand which is how uh matt and i watched it but uh so i just wanted to go over that and then uh now we're going to move on to netflix uh do you think, netflix do you think bill and Ted's made more money at home than it did in the theaters because i don't think we'll ever know that the at home numbers they they might release the at home numbers uh, so Here's how I think at home numbers get released. If it's if it does really well, they'll tell you about it. If it doesn't do well, they won't. <laughs> so I don't I don't I mean, honestly, I mean when, when Universal released um the Trolls World Tour and it did well, they told you about it. I remember. If they didn't if they didn't tell us about it, we would have had no idea. Like Right. It's like Netflix yeah no netflix we 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 don't know how well any of their movies you know like project power that we just reviewed i don't i don't know how well it's doing besides it says it's trending you know like number one or whatever but like what does that mean like i don't know a million people watch 30 seconds of it or a million people watch an hour of it or a billion people yeah yeah that's the hard part with self-reporting um i do think that with all the streaming things, one of the benefits for though anybody who's streaming anything, they'll have hard concrete numbers for when they want to try and do like stuff. So, so like for Netflix, I think it has been they've been building all this data over these years of what people like to watch, and then they can just be like, "So, what should we get? Should we make sci-fi? Should we make this or whatever?" And they're like, "Oh, well, if we make a movie like that, it'll." probably do about here and if we do this it'll be about here and if you know like they're just learning whereas with with cable and stuff i feel like they didn't know as as well what we were really watching but now with internet stuff it's a lot easier to just know exactly like because you sign on as as you so like they already know that Matt is watching this on Netflix or Mike is watching this on Netflix and then they can start building this profile about what we do 
what we watch, how w- how many times we watch things, different stuff like that. All right. So speaking of Netflix. Yes. Oh, man, dude, you're nailing the segues today. <laughs> um, so uh, Netflix uh, just released uh, Bird Box, Two Popes, and episodes of The Stranger Things uh, for free. Uh, anticipating that this will help get more people onto Netflix. And Matt, I don't know if this will help them or not. What do you think on that? I know. I mean, I'm already subscribed to Netflix using your account, so... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. (laughs) But but what... Do you think this would help? I mean, these are good. Like, Bird Box is great. Two Popes is great. Stranger Things is, you know, just awesome. Do you think these releasing these for free will help entice people to subscribe to netflix down the road i honestly think for america most of the people that would get netflix have gotten it and uh anybody who doesn't have it isn't really going to get it if they did get it it might be for a month or two to watch some specific thing and then they're going to drop off yeah man i agree uh honestly most people I know have Netflix or access to Netflix in some way, shape, or form. I don't know. Um, maybe it'll help numbers around the world. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think it'll make a difference in the U.S. Because I agree with you. I think anybody that wants Netflix has a way to access it already, most likely. Yeah, I mean, I at least for America, I, I think maybe for other growing markets, uh, newer markets, it might work out better. But for America, I think it's fairly saturated for netflix they've done a really good job i i I really like netflix i've been a customer for a very long time i think i subscribed in 2005 so i've been a a subscriber for 15 years to netflix dude how have i been a subscriber longer than you uh man i i don't know man you just you're more on top of it yeah it was uh god 2003 or 2004 one of those it was uh, i was in an apartment in college when i got it because i i know we got we got the three dvd playing me and my roommate and we uh quickly watched them and returned them as fast as we could <laughs> yes yes i uh also watched as many as i could because uh, back then it was only dvds right. so yeah uh it's 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 really cool to see them still around and um amazing that the how they changed everything i mean not exactly but you know mostly put out of business uh blockbuster and and hollywood video and and those type stores because movies to go hastings yeah yeah just because they were it's more convenient they shipped it to your house uh netflix early on got this killer deal with the um, postal service for like pre-sorting and uh, that made it really fast for them to be able to to receive and send back movies and that just really helped and just shoot them shoot them you know and and then be able to get kind of any movie there was that I mean only when there was like brand brand new movies was it hard to get like a movie off of the Netflix DVD. So, and now it's probably easy because there's not as many people on it. I remember one of the happiest days of my college career was when they opened a Netflix fulfillment center or distribution center in Phoenix. And I got like almost instant turnaround on the DVDs. That was amazing. I love that. Yeah, it was, it was cool. And then if there was a problem with the DVD, Netflix, man, they just, they fixed it real fast. They're like, all right, we already have one sending. Yeah. Just send yours back. Like if it was broken or whatever. And like, you got to wonder out of all those DVDs and stuff, how much stuff got broken. I'm sure they have all the numbers about. Oh yeah, definitely. Especially how much, especially now, you know, I mean, look at all the stuff they keep track of now, keeping track of what movie broke coming from who. Yeah. Oh yeah. It'd be easy compared to what they do today. <laughs> Yeah, like broke, scratched, whatever. Like you could just be like, "Hey, it's scratched" or whatever, and like they'd be like, "Well, try cleaning it, and if that doesn't work, just send it back and order another one." All right, Mike. So, what are we doing for next week? Uh, Matt, that's a great question. What are we doing for next next week? I don't know. It's your turn. 
Are we going um, to the movie theaters? Does Tenet come out next week? Tenet does come out. I think it comes out over Labor Day, right? And Labor Day is so, next week. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's it's this coming weekend. Yeah. It's, it's well, uh, the Monday. Sorry. Yeah. This coming weekend. Yeah. Um, I, I think we go to the movies, man. Are we going to go to the movies? Are we going to get the Ronas? All right. Woo. I, I think it's important that we, we go and support our local theaters. And uh, I really want to see Tenet. I want to see in, it on the big, the big screen. theater. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Tenet, uh, we're, we're also uh, going to be doing something, I think, uh, with uh, the same studio that brings you Tenet, uh, Warner Brothers. And uh, we will tell you more uh, a little bit later, but we're going to have a little promotion uh, with them and uh, we'll get some more details coming up on the next episode or two so uh, stay tuned for more we'll just put it nicely we pretty much have giveaways every podcast for at least the next month maybe month and a half so yeah if you like free things if you like free movies here's your hint maybe listen and tell us your favorite beer if you want to win a copy of the vanished Ooh, good job man Good job. Damn right. So, so, so Matt, that, that's pretty much all I have. Um, do you want to have, uh, do you have any last words or, uh, I mean, that sounded terrible. Yeah. Do you have uh, any, am uh, I facing uh, the music? Uh, Jesus, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm take you out, shoot uh, in, in the back and shoot you, man. It's fine. It's about time. <laughs> See, then my my prophecy is true. Your true revenge and the person you want to get at is me. <laughs> I know yeah, it. Yeah. I know it, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have anything else other than, you know, tell your friends, tell your family. I mean, you know, these giveaways are fun. And if you guys don't participate in them, we don't get them to give away. So, yeah, hit us up. It's It's cool. Enjoy life a little bit, especially right now. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, contact us on the socials. Email us for these giveaways. Uh, we, Like Matt said, we have lots coming down the, the pipe, and uh, we are enjoying just giving away stuff and, and engaging in our audience, and we'd love to hear from you. And I guess with that, uh, everyone go out and watch as many movies as you can, and we'll catch you on the next episode of The Real Film Nerds. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Good morning, Magic 99.1. Who's this? I don't know. Who's this? (laughs) You called me first, I think. Yes. Hi, Matt. How are you? I'm doing incredible, Lisa. How are you? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's what I wanted to hear from you this morning. Thank you for that. Well, it's all because I'm going to go to the movies this upcoming weekend. Oh, so my we can gosh. talk about that after I uh, talk about the movie I watched for this week. Okay, it was Bill and Ted Face the Music. What'd you think? I liked it a lot. It was a lot of fun. Was it? It might have been just because of the mood I was in that day or whatever, but I really enjoyed it. It was really a lot of fun. It was nostalgic. It was silly. It was dumb. It was entertaining. <laughs> the story is a little rough, but for the most part, it was a really fun movie. Well, now, do I recommend people to spend $25 on it to watch it? No. No. But if you get a bunch of your friends together and you sit down and watch it or you go to the movie theater, which I found out it's actually in the movie theater, uh-huh. then yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Well, you agree with uh, Rotten Tomatoes. They rated it at 80% with their tomometer. What is that called? Tomato meter and their Tomato audience meter. score. Yeah, it was also yeah. 80%. So everybody's loving this movie. It's a lot of fun. Again, it might just be because there's so much nostalgia in it, but... You know, we need something like this right now, in right. my opinion. Yes, just goofy fun. Yeah, it's not serious. It, You know, they travel through time, and now they're traveling through dimensions, and then they go to hell again, and it's just... <laughs> entertaining it's ridiculous fun i love yeah. it i love it now i have to ask you and i want to thank you for uh the blu-ray of the king of staten island i tried yep. to watch it did you watch it oh yeah i watched it did uh-huh. you did you like it 
it was okay. It wasn't uh, my favorite Apatow movie. He seems like he's becoming more and more and more serious. Yeah. Which is kind of strange. Yeah. But it was okay. Yeah, you know, um, I just kept waiting for it to come to a climax or something. It was just kind of flat, and I fell asleep. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I knew you'd be uh, disappointed in me. Well, the good news is that now we have another giveaway. I mean, the studios are just loving what my co-host and I are doing, and we pretty much have a giveaway every podcast for like the next month or two. Oh, man, that's so, awesome. So if you're listeners, this week's is for a brand new movie that came out. It's called The Vanished. It's starring Anne Heche. It's an independent film. It's a psychological thriller. We have a handful of digital codes we're giving away. And all we ask is people write into us and tell us their favorite beer. And they get entered in the contest for a free movie. That is awesome. So tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. They just email us. It's nerds at realfilmnerds.com, and it's R-E-E-L. Realfilmnerds.com. Very good. All right. Can I, sign up? Can I sign up, too? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you're always welcome to sign up. Very cool. And tell people where they can catch your podcast. Real f- film nerd, realfilmnerds.com. Jeez, I'm, I'm, I'm stumbling <laughs> over there today. It's awful. It's uh, all good. iTunes, iTunes, Spotify. Uh, you know, you can ask your Amazon Alexa to play it too. I mean, just all all over the places, anywhere you can find podcasts, YouTube, you name it. That's fun. But That's uh, fun. one last one last one. Yes. Let me give you my rating. I got to give you my reel. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'm failing you today. How many reels you no, give? No, you're fine. Bill and Ted face the music. <laughs> I give it four out of five reels. Four out of so five that's, reels. That's about the equivalent of 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you nailed it. You guys are all in sync. Very good. What are we going to watch next week? Uh, we're going to go to the theater for the first time since, you know, I think March. And we're going to watch uh, Christopher Nolan's new Tenet. You are. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Well, wear a mask and a hazmat suit, Maddie. Definitely. <laughs> All right. We'll chat with you again <laughs> next week. Thanks, Lisa. Oh, you know what? I have Monday off. It's Labor Day. So let's chat oh, no. again on Tuesday of next week, okay? Next Tuesday. Okay. I'll mark my calendar. All right. I I'll will, do the too. Best to remember. Tell everybody what station we're chatting on. We're, we're hanging out on the one, the only Magic 99.1. <laughs> You're a rock star.